So today I wanted to talk about the news that some developers are asking for more money or threatening to cancel existing contracts for new home purchases. Last year we had some big headlines, one in particular in Barrie where a developer was asking for more money in order to complete the development. And now we have some new headlines about a condo project in Burlington that's basically saying, you know, we're gonna cancel your contract if you don't provide us with more money to complete the units. Now it's worth noting there have also been a number of project cancellations, sort of smaller sites, a couple in, in Scarborough over the past few months. Um, those for whatever reason haven't been getting the same headlines as the developers asking for more money instead of canceling, which I kind of find interesting because as a purchaser myself, I think I would rather have the option of either adding more money to my purchase or canceling rather than just being forced out of the asset entirely. But I'll get into that later in the video. So I've had some clients reach out specifically about the one in Burlington. So without naming any names, I want to talk about that one in specific, analyze the situation on camera, give you a little bit more context about why this is happening and explain whether it's legal or not. So to answer your first question, yes, this is unfortunately completely legal the way Ontario new homes are. When you sign a agreement of purchase and sale with a builder, you are agreeing to a number of clauses in there that protects the builder. Um, you're also agreeing to some clauses that protect you, the purchaser, but we're not going to focus on those in this video here. The key clause to be aware of when it comes to the risk of a project canceling is the financing clause. It's important to remember that 99% of developers in Toronto do not have the cash required on hand to build a condo building, right? So just like you and I go to the bank to get a mortgage or, you know, most of us go to the bank to get a mortgage in order to complete a property purchase. Um, we have a little bit of cash in the property and then also we take the bank's money to finance the rest of it. Developers are no different. So developers will generally buy a piece of land, they'll zone it, approve it, and then once they reach certain targets, they can go to the bank and get a construction loan to actually build the thing. Now this debt comes with some restrictions. The big ticket item being a minimum sold percentage and a minimum profit target. So just for rough numbers for a hypothetical here, generally speaking, you will need about a 20% profit margin to qualify for that construction debt. And you're also gonna need a minimum sold percentage. So say on average, roughly 75% sold. So as you would expect with our hypothetical here, in order to get that construction financing as a developer, you're going to need to sell out 75% of your building and you're going to need to do so at a minimum 20% profit margin in order to get that loan from the bank. So here's the tricky thing for developers. The tricky thing is timing. Meaning that for example, if a building sells out in 2016 at 2016 condo prices, and then maybe for whatever reason, there are delays getting to construction and say it takes three, four years to actually get to construction, very quickly that 20% profit margin that they sold at can evaporate. This now puts the developer in a really tricky situation. They kind of have two choices now. Number one, they can cancel the project altogether, relaunch later at higher prices, or sell that site to a new developer who can launch condos there. Or number two, they can go to purchasers and ask for more money and say, look, we didn't get the financing. We're not at the minimum profit target we need to be at to get that financing. So either you give us more money or we have to cancel the contracts and relaunch the site. Now, I don't speak for the developers in question here. Uh, neither of the news articles I'm talking about, I'm not talking about anyone in specific, right? Because I don't know the specifics of the developer. I can't speak for them, but I can say that this is typically why we see project cancellations in Toronto and in Ontario in general. So to give you a rough idea on where construction costs have gone over the past few years, I pulled the Altus Construction Guide from 2016 and the Altus Construction Guide for 2022 to show the difference in the cost of building a condo back then versus today. So you can see here in the 2016 cost guide, they're estimating hard costs on a 13 to 39 story condo building, just your average cookie cutter condo building, Nothing luxurious here. Um, they're estimating it at $195 to $260 per square foot for hard costs only. Now, this doesn't include things like land costs, development fees, taxes, none of that, just the cost to build the thing. Now we jump over the 2022 cost guide from Altus, and you can see that we're up to $285 to $345 per square foot for hard costs alone. That is an increase of over $100 per square foot, or roughly a 33 to 46% increase in the cost of building a condo 2016 versus 2022. Now, look, I'm not trying to uh, defend developers here in any way, shape or form. Obviously, as a consumer, this is terrible when a project cancels. You fork over a deposit for a new home, you wait a number of years, nothing gets started, nothing gets done. And then ultimately, you're told we either need more money or we're going to cancel the contract entirely. The good news is that in Ontario, your deposits for a new condo are either left in the lawyer's trust or they're insured by ECDI, meaning that you're always going in the, in the event of a project cancellation, you know that you're going to get your deposit money back at the at a minimum. But obviously you've lost that value and time in the market and you're left with nothing and maybe even priced out of the market at this point. 
So like I said, I'm not defending them. I'm just trying to give some context on why these things happen so you can understand the economics of building in Toronto. And things like buying from reputable developers or buying fully zoned and approved sites that are clear on construction timeline can help mitigate these risks massively. I do have other videos on my channel on how to mitigate those risks, but you can never eliminate the risk entirely. But I will leave the link in the description to, uh, to those videos so you can watch them if you want. But this all leads me to my final point. My final point is that replacement cost for housing, so the cost to build new housing in Toronto is skyrocketing even quicker than the market itself is. And this is why for the past year or so, I've been warning about the cancellation risks of condo projects in Toronto, specifically projects that launched at pre-COVID prices and haven't actually broken ground or started construction yet. I think a lot of those projects are actually at risk of not having any margin left to get construction financing. I'll cut to a quick clip from an earlier video that uh, last year from me where I spoke about this in a little bit more detail. If you're looking for pre-construction specifically rather than resale, there are some serious opportunities at lingering um, inventory at these projects that launched a year or two ago, uh, provided, which can be really smart investments provided they are already under construction or by a large de uh, reputable developer because the risk of cancellation is quite high on anything that's you know launched at two years ago pricing but hasn't broken ground yet because the construction costs have, ris uh, have rose so rapidly in that period of time that those margins for that developer may just be, they may be gone and they may be forced to cancel those projects. Now, if you watch my other videos, you know that the margins for developing condos in Toronto is incredibly thin and is actually getting thinner every year. So while prices go up, the percentage point, the, the margin, on new condo developments is actually decreasing. Here's a chart I made with data from Rad Marketing and Altus Group as well, uh, that kind of shows the profit margin of a new build condo in Toronto for your average cookie cutter kind of building. You can see on this chart, for example, that the government takes on average roughly $160,000 of the cost of a new condo in Toronto in the form of taxes, levies, and fees, which is often actually more than the developer will profit on that unit themselves. And it's also worth noting that this graph was made, you know, pre-COVID 2019. I haven't updated it for a while. So these costs are actually worse now. The government increases, you know, development levies and fees every year. So margins are thin. Construction costs are inflating. Land costs are inflating. Development levies are inflating. Um, that puts a lot of developers in a very precarious position when it comes to building in Toronto. Uh, so Altus is showing us roughly a 40% increase in construction costs from 2016 to 2020. 20. But what's interesting to me is when you look at a lot of other construction cost reports and outlooks, you'll see even worse inflation in the numbers than that. For example, here's a chart from StatsCan showing the increase in construction costs in Canada. And you can see that it essentially goes vertical over the past couple of years due to supply chain, COVID, all the rest of it. Also, here's a tweet from Tony Kwan, somebody who's in the industry and a great follow on Twitter, who gives a construction cost update for some specific items in 2021 alone. So in 2021 alone, you're looking at frameworks and concrete up 6%, drywall up 20%, glass up 25%, and steel up 59%. Another great Twitter follow is Jeremiah, who's a commercial broker from Colliers, who warned about the labor shortage in the construction industry. So I just wanna point this tweet out to you. 23% of the construction labor force are boomers and estimated to be retiring within the next five years or so. The forecast from Colliers is that we're only going to see 6% of new trades, construction labor coming online. So that's obviously a huge shortfall of labor retiring versus new labor coming online. And of course, that's going to drive construction costs up even further. And that's not even accounting for the fact that trade unions are renegotiating their contracts right now and looking at 20 to 30% increases across the board. So this all goes to essentially say, uh, when you're buying pre-construction, you need to be clear of the current state of the project. Is the project zoned and approved? What's the construction timeline looking like? Now, this won't eliminate your risk. Naturally, with any investment, uh, there's risk. And one of the primary ones with pre-construction is the fact that a project can cancel. But you want to be clear on all these items before you go purchasing a pre-construction condo, of course. So I have a great course on how to vet projects. I will put the link in the description. And if you want to hop on a call with me to talk about investing in real estate in Toronto, you can do that at precondo.ca slash call. Happy to talk through options with you, see what's right for you, or if investing is right at all. Um, and that is it for this video, guys. So uh, thank you for watching. Leave a comment, leave a like, and I will see you guys next time.